Hey everybody, today I want to show you the next version of Laravel Split that has a new table component. I've got a fresh Laravel application with Splate, so we can start right away. What you see here is just the standard Laravel Splate homepage. And in the menu, I've added a link to the users page. And this page is still empty. Let me show you the routes file. Here in the editor, you can see the homepage, the documentation page, and now also the user page. I've got a user controller, and that just returns the index view. Here you can see the dots that I'm going to replace with the actual table. I've seeded the database with 100 users and I will fetch them now from the database. So users equal user get and let's dump it for now. Go back to the browser, hit refresh and here are my 100 models. So instead of dumping it, of course, I want to show it in a table. So after the view, I'm going to pass in the data which will be a user's key. And then I'm going to use a split table for the users. Then I need to define my columns, which will be the name, the email, and a language code. Then finally, we need to render this table. So let's go back to our split view and replace the dots with a split table component. Don't forget the users. And let's go to the browser. So there it is, the table component with the name column, the email column, and the language code. This is all generated automatically. So you can see all the models right here. And at the bottom, what I want to add is some pagination. So let's go back to the controller. And instead of the get method, we're going to use the paginate method. Let's refresh the browser. And now there are only 15 users. So I can adjust the pagination and I can go to page two, for example. And now at the top right, you can see right here, the reset button. So this will take me back to the first page. Now I wanna sort the users by their name or maybe by their email address. So let's do that. The column method takes an additional argument the sortable argument, and we're just gonna set it to true. And this will render sort buttons in the head of the table. So after a refresh, we've got those little icons next to the header, but it doesn't work yet. We have to apply it to our query. So let's reset the table for now. And of course we could build this manually, but there's a great package by Spazi called Laravel Query Builder that does this all for you. So let's go to the terminal and install this package. Composer requires Spazi Laravel Query Builder. And then we can use this package in our controller. So instead of directly paginating the user model, we are gonna use the Query Builder class from the package. So Query Builder for the user class, and then call paginate on that Query Builder. Now we can define a default sort, which will be name. And then we need to define what columns may be sorted. So that will be name and email. And then lastly, we need to define the default sort on the display table as well. So again, default sort name. Let's go back to the browser and hit refresh. And now the eloquent models are sorted by name. So this works great. We can sort by name. If we click on it, it sorts in descending order. We can order by email, but there's one thing that doesn't work. We are now sorting by email, but when I go to the second page, that sort is lost. It's sorted by name again. Luckily, there's an easy fix for this. So let's go back to our controller. And then after the paginate method, we're gonna use with query string. Let's reset the page and sort by email. Let's go again to page two, and now it works. Now we got both the page and the sort in the query string. All right, what I wanna show you next is how to add search inputs to the table. This will allow us to search by name or by email. And this is all quite easy to do with the query builder package. So just like allowed sorts, there's also allowed filters and we're gonna give it that same name and email. And then in the column method, 
Just like the sortable argument, there's also a searchable argument. Now we have this little search icon at the top right. And when I click on it, I can choose name. And then I can start searching for a name. For example, Weber. And there it is. Let's check out if the email field also works. Let's see, maybe Ford. And that seems to work as well. Of course, you can also combine these two fields, but maybe you want to search them at once. So search for name and email. And we can do that with a global search. So let's add it to the table with global search. And this will add a search input above the table. Here it is. And we still need to implement this on the query builder side. So in the allowed filters method, we are gonna add a custom global search. And Spazi has great documentation on how to implement this, but there's also an example in display documentation. So I'm gonna use that one for now. So let's grab it and paste it into the controller, import the classes. And this essentially gives you a way of defining your own search constraints. So it loops over the words you type in, and then it adds a or where constraint to the query builder with a wildcard for name and email. So let's go back to the browser and let's see if this works. Go back to our demo application and let's go for Ford again. And you can see it has found a user with Ford in the email address and with Ford in the name. So this works great. Now you might have already seen, let's reset the table. You might have seen this little I button at the top right. And with this button, you can toggle the columns. So for example, I can hide the language code or maybe hide the email address. And while this is great, you might want to always show the name of the user. And that's quite easy to do. There is a can be hidden argument, which we can set to false. And then the name toggle will disappear from the dropdown. So we've got search inputs for the name, the email address, and a global search. But what if we want to filter on language code? We could use a select filter for this. Let's see. At the end of my split table code, I'm gonna add a select filter for the language code. And I will give it two options, English and Dutch. And of course, we should not forget to add the language code to the allowed filters. Now, when we refresh the page, there will be a filter icon at the top left. And now I can filter the models based on their language code. And of course, we can combine this with other search constraints. For example, I could still use the global search. And I could still use the column toggles. I could add an additional search constraint for the name. Well, you get the idea. This all works out of the box. Let's reset the table and show you another great thing. It's very easy to make a row clickable. For example, if I click on a user, I want to navigate to a user's edit page. And we can do that with the row link method. This takes a callable argument, which takes a user model. And here you can define the link for each user. To save some time, I've already built this uh, show user controller. So let's import it into a route file, users slash user, and then the show user controller. And let's give it the name of users show so back in the rolling method let's return that route route users.show with the user back in the browser now each row is clickable so for example if i click on abel here we are at the users.show route let's try another one maybe arch and there is arch now, instead of making the whole row clickable, you might want to have a separate column for your actions. For example, to navigate to an edit page. So I'm gonna remove that row link method again and replace it with an action column. And of course, action doesn't exist on the user model. So for each row, the action column will be empty. But here's the cool thing. In our blade view, in the use.index blade view, we can define how that action cell should be rendered. So for this, we're gonna use the cell directive for the action column 
And just like the row link method, we can use the user model. And let's render a link. So link to that same show users controller. So user slash the user ID. Let's name this link edit and close the tag. Use the end cell directive to mark the end of this custom cell. And you know what? Let's make this link bold and give it a nice color. Maybe a nice Indigo 600. And here it is. Now each row has an action column. And if we click on it, yeah, it goes to that same route. So it still works. Let's check out one other user. Cool. The last thing I want to show you is just a little tiny feature. We can add a striped attribute to our table. And now it has a striped layout. So that's it for the table component. In the next release, we will add form components. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.